Good morning, Tribal members. This is Lee from High Performance Coaching and Training. And um, today I've got Farmer Greggy, and he's going to join me today for our Facebook Live. And we're going to have a bit of a chat about his purpose and things like that as well. So it's really exciting. So welcome aboard, um, Farmer Greggy. Good stuff. Thanks, Lee. It's good to be here this morning having a chat to you. Absolutely. So Greg is um, part of our tribe. Um, so he's part of our, our business leaders, um, grow, uh, a business leaders rising tribe. So um, I thought he'd be a great person because uh, once a month I'm bringing on board some of our tribe members to interview them, just so our tribe begins to understand and get to know, um, um, I suppose, our members a bit, a bit more. So I suppose, uh, Greg, you want to have a bit of a talk about your story and just just kick it off? How does that sound? Yeah, cool. Look, it's um, it's really interesting, Lee, because we've just started working together recently, and and I guess I'm a little bit different to a lot of your other tribe members. Um, I'm a country boy. I have grown up on the family farm, and it's a a generational dairy farm. So the Dennis family have been on our property since 1936, and we have been milking cows for the uh, 82 years now, but. We've seen a lot of change over that time, obviously, and one of the things that I've really started to recognise in recent times is the disconnect between city and country. And you, you kind of grow up a little bit insulated against that if you're growing up in the country. You know, we have busy lives no matter where you're living these days, and, and um, so we would tend to associate more with farmers if we are a farmer. If you're growing up in the city and you've um, got... And, and the truth is our rural communities, our farming communities are struggling financially. Mm. So the difference between the people, um, you know, we want to keep providing for the people who choose to live in the towns and city. Mm. But the truth is mm. the only way you can choose to live in a town and city is if somebody else chooses to grow your food for you because people are living their busy lives and it doesn't matter if you're a wage earner, a business owner, a politician, uh, you know, a, a professional person, you don't have time to grow your own food. Absolutely. You want someone to do that for you. So, yeah. so that's my motivation and my drive. Yeah, I know myself, I, I, I want to make sure, especially as I'm getting a bit more mature and things like that as well, I want to make sure that, um, you know, I myself don't want to grow food. So so we rely on farmers like yourself to, to give us that quality food that, that hasn't been, um, you know, modified and all of that sort yeah. of stuff. Oh, and a lot of, I think, I think you know, with our huge obesity rate, and I mean food, you know, health and our health and things like that, you know, it, it, it's getting out of control because we're so we're so connected now getting that fast food that that has been processed, you know, that has been, yeah. um, um, you know, modified and things like that as well. And I, I don't think a lot of people stop and actually even think about, about what you guys do on the farm and things like that and how important your role is as well. But I think it's also so important to uh, educate our children so the next generation start to understand, you know, where our our food is growing, they're educated and they're making better choices. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's becoming increasingly important for our children and, and, you know, grandchildren. A lot of people who come for our farm tours could be anywhere from semi-retired through to families through to high school and primary school age. So um, so more and more people are growing up, you know, they're born into the towns and cities. They are becoming generational um, town, or, town or city people. And in days gone by, you know, half of us used to grow up in the country areas, but, but the job opportunities have dried up. So there's been this unintentional um, migration away from country because Financially, people need to chase job opportunities, and I totally understand and accept that. But, um, but where where the food comes from is, you know, there's, there's a scary reality there. And the reason I ask people if they eat food, I want them to consciously recognise that they haven't thought about that. They haven't thought about where their food's coming from. And there was a survey done of school students in Australia only seven years ago now, in 2011. 70% of school kids in Australia thought that cotton grew on trees and yogurt came off animals. Now, mm. the truth is that cotton, um, sorry, I got that back to front then, that cotton 
is um, coming off animals and yogurt grows on trees. Mm. And, you know, cotton is a plant. I'm mm. sure those kids were thinking about sheep and wool. Mm. So we, we've got this disconnect about where our food and fibre is coming from and the role that the farmer plays. Mm. And by the way, that survey was done of, on year 11 students in Australia. Mm. So, you know, we're, we're not teaching kids these things. I think I think that's the problem with today's education is the children are not learning lifestyle skills. Yeah, you know, they're they're lacking in the social skills and the and the communication. I mean, they're very they're very tacky that they understand how to use social media and all of that. But when you get them into a room and actually start communicating with them, that they, they're kind of lost. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're losing that um, that connection, that one on one connection with people. Don't you think? And and part of that, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah, hmm. look De definitely, and and but I think there's some really good signs with our kids growing up today, and the kids going through schools today, and because of access of information on the internet, which I, I see can be a very positive thing if used for the right reasons, but um, they are developing a social conscience that maybe our generation weren't paying attention to our impact on planet Earth, and. And I think there's some really exciting things happening in that space where kids growing up today are going to be solving the problems we created when it comes to our environment and, uh, and levels of pollution and getting back to eating real food. Like I'm a very big believer that real food is our medicine. We drifted away from that. We've eat, been eating a lot of food-like substances. Um, the food industries have become, become more about profit and Big food companies are all about making money because that's what business is about. But the purpose of food in our life needs to be to maintain and sustain health within us. So we need to get back to eating real food that has uh, a real, you know, nutrient density. We can't just keep filling our bodies with food-like substances that are devoid of nutrient. Correct. And that's something interesting too because... Um um, I know, I know we've been chatting a little bit, you know, working together and things like that. And we've been chatting a little bit. I asked a few questions of, you know, um, you have, um, you know, obviously you have a dairy farm and you um, provide a lot of, um, you know, um, dairy products and, and things like that as well. Um, yeah. So I also, you know, asked, asked you a bit of the question of um, um, why, you know, how is your, your milk processed differently um, that makes it stand out, say, from buying the cheap brand at, at, at Coles or, or whatever. Because the, um, I think when people become consciously aware of the differences and you're educated around that, people are, are often they'll make a better informed decision. And I was having yeah. a conversation just recently to someone and I went, you know, until I started working with you, Farmer Greggy, I didn't really think about that. Um, but, no. um, but the other instance, but it, it's not because, it's because I didn't know. Um, it's because I know often a lot of people when they go into um, supermarkets today, they don't, cheap, they don't buy the cheapest eggs. They don't buy caged eggs anymore. They buy the, the free range eggs. They buy, you know, the eggs that, you know, maybe they're organically uh, directed or things like that. And the reason why, and they choose to um, pay more because they can see the value of paying more for those products because they want to support the cause of not being cruel to animals or, or that sort of thing as well. And also they're educated mm. um, the difference between that as well. So I think that's really important to get out there so people understand the same sort of um, thing around milk. So can you give us a bit of a, a, a bit of a rundown why the milk yeah. is um, then buying the cheaper, you have the two dollar, the dollar twenty five, and most of the times the reason why the, the big supermarkets do that is to get customers in, in um, 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 into their doors and things like that. So yes, it's it's absolutely known that uh, cheap milk is a loss leader. Uh, supermarkets knowingly sell that stuff at a loss. Now they can't they can't legally sell it at a loss in Australia because that would be considered predatory pricing. But it is an effective loss because they're, they're buying it for a couple of cents less than they sell it for, but all of the costs incurred to make that sale means that they are effectively losing 20-25% on that item. 
when normally a supermarket is making a, a 30 to 40 percent markup on every item they sell. Well, that's what they aim to do. Mm -hmm. So in our case, what we're seeing happening in the case of milk is over a period of time, more and more companies have done more and more damage to fresh milk <laughs> mm -hmm. and fresh milk is not so fresh anymore. Mm -hmm. So that has a real impact on the way our body digests and recognises the dairy products we're consuming. Now, conveniently, over a period of decades, more and more people are being told they have a lactose problem mm. and that that is therefore dairy products causing the lactose problem. It's actually back to front because now I've been doing a lot of research into this and I've been getting a lot of feedback from people. And, and the truth is that in surveys I've done, 95% of people who thought they had a lactose problem are drinking for real milk, not getting sick. Now, our milk is fully lactose loaded. We don't take anything out. We don't put anything in. It's just milk. So, so the process of homogenization, a lot of people do not realize. Um, and, and people of our age and older, we were kind of told when we were young that homogenization simply mixes the cream through the milk. Well, the truth is the cream gets mixed through the milk because homogenization effectively is a piston smashing milk through tiny tubes and filters, breaking down the fat globules and the protein chains into tiny little sharp fragments. They're like splinters. So, so that's a massive problem to our body. Now, over time, this process is becoming more and more damaging. Big food companies want to make milk last longer on the shelf. They're doing more processing to give it a shelf life. By the way, long life milk is another lie. That stuff should be labelled no life milk. It is a dead product. Now, pasteurisation is required by law when it comes to milk. And for real milk on our factory, on our farm, we have been doing one process to all of our milk for the past four years now, and that is heating it up and cooling it down, pasteurisation only. Mm -hmm. But when you homogenise milk, you destroy the molecular structure unnecessarily not required by law in Australia and that yes the cream won't float to the top when you ultra heat treat milk that is called long life milk now but ultra heat treating is flash heating the milk to 250 degrees not 72 degrees mm -hmm. and and then homogenizing without exception because you can't have a long life milk product with cream floating to the top mm -hmm. over a period of six or 12 months you'd need a hammer and a chisel to get through that stuff so so we've completely destroyed the molecular structure of a lot of modern milk and now people are getting sick, mm. being told that the lactose in the milk is their problem, but that's actually not true. We, you know, we, we're, we're doing damage to our food and it's affecting the way we digest the end product. We're seeing a lot of the same things happening today with gluten and the way that our grains are being processed. We used to stone mill grain. You know, they used to crush the grains with a stone. And now we're processing it with steel blades and we're altering the structure of the end product, which is affecting our digestion. So, so I do talk a lot in, you know, in the tour experience and we will talk a little bit about the farm tours, but um, people get to hear me sharing my own life experiences when it comes to food. And I know personally through some pretty big challenges I've faced physically and mentally that real food is our medicine and if we get that right, we start to heal our body and our mind. And, and today, a lot of the challenges we're facing in general health and well-being is because we are choosing to consume food-like substances instead of real food. That's right. I mean, I mean, um, there's more, I mean, there's more and more allergies today, whereas I suppose back yeah. years ago when, when, when food wasn't so processed and, and things like that, there wasn't as many allergies. So that's really, it's really interesting because um, it's, I suppose, up to us as individuals, one, to make choices of the food that we eat so that we do get the nutritional value and the health and all that as well. But the other thing is yeah. also is to support courses like, like yourself, like the farmers, to actually support them as well. Um, and that's really important as well. So, um, yeah. so your milk is called, what's it called again? Is it for life milk? For, for, for real milk. So that's actually our logo. Um, okay the number four, real yeah. milk. And 
and we're very conscious about just doing less damage. We want to keep it as real as possible. And the exciting yeah. point is, um, I know that you've been chatting to me as well because I'm working a bit with you as well. Um, you've just released um, some of the milk, you know, four real milk with natural flavours in it, guys. So none of this <laughs> shit and everything else that goes into it. So let's have a bit of a chat about your flavours that you've just recently released. Yeah, so we, we've intentionally kept it very simple and we have just bottled white milk on our farm for our first five years in business. Um, this month is actually our fifth birthday of For Real Milk. and and But, of course, people have been telling us for ever since we started, you know, you need to do a flavoured milk and we have looked at the opportunities to do that. I'm very conscious of us overloading our kids with sugar today. We're putting massive amounts of sugar in everything and... Uh, in most of the big company flavoured milks you can buy today, they have nearly as much sugar as um, a soft drink. So that's a frightening reality. Now, in our case with milk, I wanted to look at doing flavours that we could minimise the amount of sweetener in, or, or even eliminate adding any sugar. And our first two flavours that we've launched, we've, um, we've done, I think it's a first in Australia. I haven't seen anyone else doing uh, mango flavoured milk. So the For Real Mango Smoothie was just launched last week. And it has two ingredients, milk and mango. That's it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're using real Aussie mangoes, but um, it's the pulp of the mango and we're simply mixing it with the milk. That's mm -hmm. all we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've also done a dark chocolate and our dark chocolate has three ingredients, but we're using for real milk, obviously, we're also using uh, raw cacao beans, so we're not even using cocoa powder. Um, so that is, again, minimal damage to the powder that we're putting in with the milk. And and a small amount of dextrose. So dextrose is uh, is a sugar. It's a, a form of sugar, but it's not cane sugar. And mm. we're seeing through different trials that have been done, it's not triggering a, um, a, an insulin spike within people who perhaps have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, um, not to the same extent that cane sugar or high fructose corn syrup. So, so we're putting effectively two teaspoons of dextrose in our chocolate milk versus, you know, some of the big companies adding 10 and 12 and 14 teaspoons of sugar. Yeah. It's, um, so so our, our flavoured milks are not going to be super sweet. I had a great conversation just yesterday with our coffee roaster. Yes, we are looking at doing a cold press iced coffee nice. or a cold brew iced coffee yeah. and it will have two ingredients it will be the coffee extract and milk that's it we're, we're actually going to do it completely unsweetened mm -hmm. so I keep telling everyone you know what if you if you like ice break or barista brothers keep drinking that rubbish because mm -hmm. ours will not taste anything like that mm -hmm. um, but for me you know I've got off that reliance of sugar some years ago I read a book called sweet poison by David Gillespie and and I don't add sugar to anything. You know, I just, my tea or coffee or even hot chocolate now, I don't add sugar. And I don't think we need to keep adding sugar to everything we eat. It has become an addiction. It's become a comfort food. And, and in a lot of ways, as you mentioned earlier, with obesity that we're seeing today, but in, especially type 2 diabetes in kids. You know, type 2 diabetes is different to type 1. Type 2 is what we inflict on ourselves through our lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. And quite often what we see is parents unknowingly inflicting that on their young kids as they're growing by feeding them so many products today. I mean, you can start to read labels and ingredients list and you'll see products that have a 4.5 star health rating, yep. yet they're, they're loaded with sugar, they're low fat, and they're made from reconstituted products. So there's actually zero nutritional value in those 4.5 star health rating products. It's crazy. It is crazy because um, I think a lot of us went through the different stages in education where we, we, we thought fat was the issue and we, we went mm. into all, all no fat and the sugar. The sugar, we found out now with the latest research, the sugar is the issue opposed to good, good fats and things like that as well. So and, tell me and we were lied to about that, Lee, with, with the fat yeah. issue. You know, we were lied to about that by bad science and we were led to believe it to be the truth. Mm. And now science is uncovering, good mm. science is uncovering all of those lies and 
And you're right. I mean, good fats, saturated fats from animal products are in fact healthy for the human body. Our body knows what to do with that. Uh, sugars, all sugar does is add flavour to food. It has no enzymes and no nutrients. And yes, in excess, it is toxic to the human body. Sure. And and your milk, full milk, is that? Can you find that at the normal supermarkets and things like that? So for real milk has been been a real challenge for us because we have intentionally stuck with independent retailers at this point, and uh, I'm talking IGAs, Foodworks, butchers, sure. bakers, fruiterers, service stations, news agents, cafes, corner stores. You know, um, anyone who wants to stock for real milk, and predominantly within, uh, I'd say, eighty percent of our sales are within southeast Queensland. But but it's a challenge because the independent retail sector are really struggling to get the support of the people. And I'm still a big believer in people power. You know, I, I believe people power will drive markets in any certain direction for better or worse. We're seeing that today with the, do, you know, the dollar a litre price war on milk, which has now been running for seven years. And it's killing the dairy farmer Australia wide. And yes, the public of Australia know this to be true because you all got told two years ago when a campaign went viral and every talkback radio station was, was running the story and it was in all of the print media and a current affair ran a story and the project ran a story. And guess what? 60% of people today in Australia are buying dollar a litre milk because they think it's a good deal. So the people's power works. People's power will drive markets and you will finish up with the, the outcome better or worse. Um, so, so yes, it's been a challenge for us to shift enough volumes of milk through independent retailers. But, but that's where we are at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that alarms me a little bit for farmers in Australia to survive, if, if the Australian people are successfully brainwashed into cheap, cheap and down, down when it comes to your food, then the only way to buy cheap food is if it's not real food. Mm -hmm. so, you know, the food-like substance cheap and more and more of them will come from overseas. Mm. Australian farmers can on price. We are very efficient and we we can utilise technology but you know we have incredibly high land values of our farmland in Australia. We have wages and um, you know meeting CPI on all of those things that inflate in price. So our food that are grown locally in Australia are amongst the highest quality in the world. They are also more expensive than the cheap Imperia uh, mm. imports, Imperia imports. And, and people are moving towards, well, if that's the stuff that's the cheapest to buy, then that's what we want to buy. But it, hey, it could be coming from China or Brazil or South Africa in the future. It's really about our health and making conscious decisions to support farmers and things like that as well. Um, and the yes. more that we see, um, you, know, you know, Farmer Greggy or people like himself talking about that, the more that we're going to become consciously aware of, um, hey, this is what we're doing. Because a lot of people, you know, don't even stop and think. They just, they just buy this stuff and that's what they do. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, have a quick chat with you about as well, um, a little bit about your tours and some of the new things that you're looking at actually doing and moving into as well. Yeah. Tours and things like that. Yeah, well, I, I I guess, I guess in a way I've become less and less of a farmer in recent years, more of the, that public face and, and I'm comfortable in this space having a chat to people and, you know, putting, putting my ugly mug in front of a camera and doing interviews and not a lot of farmers like doing that sort of thing. I, but I'm also aware that I'm telling people I'm, I'm consciously wanting to become the first celebrity farmer in the world. And that can be misconstrued that I'm just chasing some fame and, and glory here when the truth is I just want to utilise that platform to share a message with people who aren't getting to hear this information. Mm. I could care less about becoming famous. I want to be able to connect with more and more people. So the, the initial start of the journey for me in that on this path was doing farm tours. And yes, we do farm tours now most days of the week. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning is our pub, is our popular time. We have a robotic dairy, so robots milk cows. Uh, I'm here talking to you right now. Robots are milking my cows on farm. I'm actually not on farm. I'm visiting my sister at the moment down the Gold Coast. So, yeah, yeah. so it's incredible technology. 
and and the robots will keep milking cows and people can sit there for the viewing experience and I'll stick my headset mic on and away I go and I'll tell them everything they're looking at and I'll talk through a whole lot of other things like we've already discussed this morning. Mm -hmm. The, um, you know, the, the, the issue with the farm tours is that that's a great audience and I've now hosted more than a thousand tours on our farm. So that's exposing lots of people. You know, we, we could have had nearly 100,000 people visit our farm over the last six years, but I want to continue to expand beyond that. So we're, we're looking at doing farm tours during the day, um, something exciting that you and I have discussed recently, and we're looking at maybe doing a twilight tour of, uh, you know, on a monthly basis, let's sit around a little campfire on a bale of hay and, and have a chat and tell some stories. And guess what? As the sun's going down and the, and the fire's warming up, there's still cows getting milked in the robotic dairy, so people will be able to yeah. see what's happening there as well. And, and so we're looking at that. Haven't started doing that yet. Um, I did, I wrote my first ever book, Holy Cow, in, um, and did that just last year through um, Natasha Denman, who has an awesome program. And Holy Cow is very much a story of my life so far, but it also includes a lot of the topics I feel strongly about reconnecting city with country, you know, getting people to understand where their food comes from, recognising real food is our medicine, how that will impact on our physical health and our mental well-being. And as somebody who's suffered depression, and, and I speak openly about that, I know what a difference it makes if I get a little bit off track and get a bit lazy with my eating or drinking habits. You know, I've got to, got to come back to real food and, and making conscious choices and decisions. Yeah. So um, so those um, tours and the Twilight tours and new ones are coming on board and things like that as well. Um, so your farm's located just outside of Odessa, isn't it? So it's Brisbane. It's Brisbane. Yeah, based. So it's yeah that's right. We're only an hour from Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Yeah. It's um, it's perfect location for an easy round trip. Yeah. Sure. And so um, how can they contact you to book in? To, to book in so, and also we yeah. we've talked a little bit about you know maybe also experiencing the products and i don't know if you've thought more about this or not yet but how you have a choice now that when you do go to a tour you can do a package and take home some beautiful cheeses and and some milks and things like that so the family can experience the difference between your product opposed to that That's the right. cheap the cheap brands that you have in coals and things like that which we i think be a marvelous marvelous experience yeah yeah so at the moment it's it's a it is a paid tour experience and people will come and um the feedback we get from from our visitors is incredible you know they they just think that we're offering such good value for money because they get to see and hear all these things that nobody else is teaching them so so we've also got a, a rapidly increasing number of schools visiting high school kids, primary school kids coming by the coach load. And we have a number of schools now that come back every year or even maybe multiple times a year. We, um, as you said, we are looking at maybe a bit of a package, a value pack where people can include in the tour some product, copy of Holy Cow, those kind of things where um, we're, at this stage it's just been all done separately from each other. Tour experience, yes, if you want to buy a product, if you want to buy a book, it's all available. So. So it's it's definitely evolving, and as you know, and uh, you know, working with me at this stage, I'm a bit of a visionary. I'm a bit of a creative. I struggle with the structure, and I'm yep. very conscious of that. So I really want to look at how can I start to move things in a in a more positive direction with our with our milk business and what Farmer Greg is all about. I'm very conscious of putting some solid bases in play here so that I can fast track what I'm doing in a way. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We've been on, we, I've been on for a while, so we want to sort of start wrapping up and things like that as well. But Farmer Greg is also, he really wants to get out there and let people know about this. So um, he's always looking for speaking opportunities. So, you know, if you, if you want someone to, to come in and do a speaking opportunity, he will talk about what we've talked about today, uh, probably a bit more depth as well, share his wisdom, but he's very inspirational to uh, listen to. And I suppose it's, uh, it's like everything. We've got to hear a message several times before we take action on it. 
It's just that who we are, we forget. And the more that people like Farmer Greg and people get there and start educating our children and ourselves as well about the importance of supporting supporting our community, you know, supporting our, our, our farmers, you know, looking at, well, you know, um, um, if I buy, if I eat sort of, um, sort of um, low, you know, low grade food or milk or things like that, it's going to affect my health anyway. So it's all about us now making better choices. And yes, and you can't compete with the um, the price war um, in supermarkets and things like that. But you've got to understand is often we look at good value as why we buy products and services. So it's not necessarily based on price. And the value that you've been speaking about today is just amazing. The different differences yeah. in the health and everything else as well. So you know, so everyone start making choices around full milk, uh, full real milk. Um, have have a look at uh, Greggy's chest there. <laughs> He's got a little logo there. That's what you want to look for on the cartons of, 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 of the bottles of milk and and things like that as well. And and, and just quickly, Lee. Oh, yeah. just quickly. I, I was thinking you asked before about where people could find out about the tours, and yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm most active on uh, Facebook. At Farmer Greggy, uh, mm -hmm. Farmer Greggy for real. I've also got um, Instagram, which is under Farmer Greggy, and I've got a YouTube channel. So you know, again, we're just trying to coordinate a bit of structure around around getting some things happening there. And we have uh, the main website for the number four realmilk.com.au. It also has details for our tours, and it has a store locator so people can zoom into their own area and see where the products are available in the sure. independent retailers. Yeah. That's right. And they can and they can buy the milk at the outlets IGA? What else? IGA yeah. uh, local IGA food. Foodworks, uh, food. Friend of Grocer, Spa Express, Butchers, Bakers, Fruiterers, Service Stations, News Agents, Cafes, Restaurants, Corner Stores. So it's like, you know, anyone that's independently operating, um, yeah. if if they want to talk to us, we can look at getting milk to them within a couple of our radius of our farm yeah fantastic if you start i don't know if you're if, if you're yeah you know, the old-fashioned days where milk used to be delivered to your door you know we, that, we did look two years ago we looked at um launching home delivery and we just couldn't make it work logistically mm. so um i have, haven't said you know goodbye to that idea forever but yeah. it's like on a small scale trying to figure out how to make that work logistically and it's yeah. a really, it's a very different landscape today. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, traditionally there was somebody at the house during the day. And yeah. now most households are empty during the day because people are working and lives are busy. So a little unless, bit more difficult to find that yeah. delivery. Unless you have delivery. Sorry? Anyway, that's something we might have yes. a bit of a <laughs> things like that as well. But um, I want to wrap up now. So thank you so much for, for coming sure. on board. I'll just, um, yeah, so thank you everyone for listening. You know, again, if you want to, um, you know, Greg is in our tribe, so um, the business leaders rising, you can always contact him in there. You can contact me and I'll pass his details on as well. Greg has already told you, let, you know, let, let's support the farmers. Go along, organise a tour, start to buy the products, taste the products, and let's just make a change in the world. I think that's really important as well. So um, wrapping up now, and thank you so much, Greggy. Bye -bye. Awesome. Thanks for having me on, Lee. Enjoyed the chat. Bye. Bye.